God's redemptive plan. When we get alarmed and discouraged because of world events, we should refocus our thoughts on God's great redemptive plan. Here now is Dr. Gene Getz. We're going into uh, First Chronicles. And immediately as we get into uh, this book of the Bible, we're going to see that it does relate in a very unusual way to God's redemptive plan. To really understand what we have in the first nine chapters, actually, of the book is to understand that the Jews have just come back from Babylonian captivity. And God is going to reassure the children of Israel of their place in history. You can imagine how they felt after 70 years of captivity. Many, many, many people lost their lives because of sin. And there was judgment as the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, came in finally. And the final dispersion took a a large group to Babylon. That 70 years that was predicted is over. And uh, by God's divine grace, uh, they have returned to Jerusalem, Judah, in that particular area. And so Ezra, we think he may have been the author of First and Second Chronicles, uh, gives us an incredible list of individuals and traces for uh, the children of Israel, actually, uh, their genealogy. And we're certainly involved in that. Uh, and, and basically what happens is that uh, the author of First Chronicles uh, goes right back to the beginning of humankind. And we have that immediately in verse 1 of chapter 1 of First Chronicles, where we read, Adam, Seth, Enos. Now immediately, uh, we know if you go back that that's a father and a son and a son. Uh, Adam gave birth to Seth, Seth gave birth to Enos, and so then the chronology uh, develops here. And what we have is a long list of names, of chronology that leads us up to Abraham and his sons. I often say that Abraham, in some respects, is where the redemptive story really begins. But here in First Chronicles 134, we read, Abraham fathered Isaac. And Isaac's sons were Esau and Israel, or Jacob. Remember, he was called Jacob, and then his name was changed to Israel. So it's at this point that God begins in a very special way to unfold his redemptive story, beginning with Abraham. And that takes us back to Genesis chapter 12. As I said, many times I like to say in teaching the Bible that this is where the real story of the Bible begins at least the story of God's redemptive plan, because up to chapter 12, we have uh, the creation, we have sin coming into the world, we have the flood, we have the Tower of Babel, uh, we have all of that taking place. But now God really begins to unfold what I said was his redemptive plan. So, Genesis chapter 12, we read, The Lord said to Abram, Go out from your land, your relatives, your father's house, to the land that I will show you. Now, let's keep in mind that uh, Abram, before he was called Abraham, was a pagan. He was an idolater. He was not worshiping God. None of his family were worshiping God. So this is a matter of God's grace. This is a matter of God reaching down into the uh, human race and begin with Abraham. And that's why we often say, Abraham was saved by grace through faith. He didn't deserve what happened. God just chose him to unveil his redemptive plan through him. And I think a reference to this event probably is in Romans when Paul said, There was none righteous, no, not one. And God began to unfold his plan through his divine grace. And so he said, I'm going to take you from where you live to a land that I will show you. It had never been to the land of Israel, but it was a promise. He made a promise to him. And then he said, I'll make you into a great nation. Now, the fact of the matter is, you see, that this is very reassuring if we go back to Abraham as far as the children of Israel are concerned, because they were taken from their land. They were taken from captivity. Where is this promise? Well, the fact is that Ezra is reminding them 
that they're back in the land. God hasn't forgotten His promise. That was an unconditional promise. And of course, here they are, just a remnant. So many of the people had been wiped out. And also the, the ten tribes, the northern tribes, had been scattered uh, to the ends of the earth, as it were. So where is the promise of a great nation? Well, as we're saying, that is still a promise. A great nation. And I will bless you, I'll make your name great, and you will be a blessing. And then here's the key. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who treat you with contempt. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. And of course, that was a promise in terms of the Messiah. And so as you follow the chronology here in First Chronicles, you actually move and follow the line of, of Isaac to Jacob or to Israel. And that's what we find in First Chronicles 2, 1 and 2. These were Israel's sons. These were Jacob's sons. See, this is the plan that God had designed. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Dan, Joseph, Benjamin, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. But notice what I've done here. I've highlighted Judah because immediately uh, you will see in the genealogy that uh, the chronicler develops Judah. And that's very important because the Messiah is coming through Judah, that particular tribe. So, we see it unfolding further. In First Chronicles 2, 13 to 15, uh, Jesse fathered Eliab. Now, Jesse is the father of David. And David was very important in this line, because eventually there's going to be the greater David, Jesus Christ. But Jesse fathered Eliab, his firstborn. Abinadab was born second. Shimea, third. Nathanael, fourth. Redai, fifth. Ozum, sixth. And David was the seventh. Remember the story when uh, Samuel looked at all of these sons, but God chose David. And that's very important as we look through uh, the rest of the book of Chronicles. So we have here the unfolding of this redemptive plan. This redemptive plan is on schedule, and God is revealing to this remnant that this redemptive plan is on schedule. Now, they don't understand the third part of that Abrahamic covenant that there will be the Messiah in all of His glory. They, this is being unfolded, but God is reassuring them of their place in history. So, the opening nine chapters in First Chronicles gives us an extensive list of names which continues to reveal God's plan of redemption. Well, let me just share with you um, a reflection response question. How do the names and sequences and the genealogies of Jesus Christ outlined by Matthew and Luke help us understand God's redemptive plan? Well, we don't have time to, to look at both of these, but let's just take uh, Matthew as an example. And if you go to Matthew uh, in the Life Essential Study Bible, you will find a principle that relates to the genealogy in Matthew. And here's that principle, the gift of salvation. No matter what our sinful condition, we should accept total forgiveness by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ who lived, died, and rose again to redeem us from all sin. Now, why that principle? Well, it comes from the genealogy. And that genealogy begins with Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. Look at this the historical record of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Now, you see, we've just reviewed that in the chronology here in First Chronicles with a redemptive plan beginning with Abraham being unfolded. And here, Matthew takes us back to David and then back to Abraham and traces it back, the record of Jesus Christ. See, that's the promise that God made to Abraham, the seed that would be a blessing to all people. And that was the Messiah, the promise of the Messiah. Now, uh, when you look at the whole of that, uh, you will discover that Matthew does illustrate grace to all people because in that chronology was Rahab, a Canaanite prostitute. She's in the genealogy of Christ. 
Ruth is there. She was a Moabitess whose genealogy began with an incestuous relationship. That's significant. That's in the genealogy of Jesus. And then some of the most notorious kings of both Judah and Israel are in that genealogy. Manasseh, for example. And under his leadership, the blood flowed through Jerusalem like never before because of his evil deeds. So here in Matthew's genealogy, we see a demonstration that God's redemptive plan was on schedule here with the coming of Jesus Christ and came through the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So we have here a real purpose, you see, in these genealogies, and we are a part of that incredible redemptive plan that is right on schedule. And the author of the Chronicles is demonstrating to the children of Israel where they fit at this moment in human history.